Listen to my podcast about sports, about sports, about sports. Audi Ags from the tailgate. Hope of Aggie football. This episode brought to you by Matthews Electric, full service electrical contractor in the Brazos Valley. No job too big, no job too small. Call Blaine at 979-220-6403. Make sure and let them know that Alejo Pacini sent you that way from Ag's tailgate. And uh, just remember, light up your home, light up your light life. Light up your life. Hey, and if you ever want to win some money, play him in some dominoes. He's terrible at dominoes. Our guest host today, Philip Rosser. Welcome to the show. Mr. What's Rosser, up, Alejo? how's it going? Man, good. Um, so apparently I'm, you know, the alternate. We'll just call myself the B team, but uh happy to be on. Happy hey, to be man. on. So so our 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 boy C Money is uh taking on a second job these days. So he he may not he may not have the ability to get on here in a while. We 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 may be doing this together for 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 some time. We'll see how it works out. Yeah, I feel bad for the uh the viewers and listeners. I mean, I'm much less handsome <laughs> than C Money, but I'll do my best. Hey, as listen. A, as a novice, I'm, hands- uh, I'm handsome YouTuber. enough to make up for both of us, so don't worry about it, man. 100%. 100%. I want to let the listeners know, don't forget to email us at axtailgate at gmail.com. Visit us on the YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Smash it. Smash it. Uh, you know, leave some comments. Let us know what you want to talk about. If you've got something that you want to hear, if you've got some questions, if you've got commentary, if you want to cuss out Phil, that's perfectly fine. We'll I'm get used to it. We'll we'll let everybody know on the show next week. So let us know. All right. Uh, today's rundown. Today's topic. We're gonna the start of spring football practice. Clearly, that's what we're gonna talk about. So obviously. Before we get to that a little bit, we're going to have a couple of news and notes here. But today's rundown is brought to you by Frida Homes, Building Aggie Dreams, custom home builders with over 15 years of experience in the Brazos Valley. If you're looking for someone that cares about you and the details you care about, contact Frida Homes, visit it, and uh, or give – let me try that again. Yeah, give them a contact call, Contact Frida yeah. Homes, call Justin – uh, at 979-450-4466. When you call, just remember, everyone loves everyone. Their, their free to homes. Everyone They're loves free their free to homes. All right. Everybody loves them. Everybody loves them. And let Justin know that Phil Rosser sent you on, at Ag, from Ag Selgate. Right? Phil Rosser. <laughs> Phil, let's... Uh, Let's do a little quick recap on Aggie basketball. You know, yet uh, hadn't hadn't been on for a couple of weeks. So obviously, since the last episode, they they sort of went on a little bit of a run, right? I mean, nice little performance in the SEC tournament. Nice little performance in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I think most people would say that it was a good finish to the season. You know, the last probably couple of weeks, they gave number one seed Houston a run for their money, everything they could handle into overtime. Sure did. Anderson Garcia hits a three pointer at the buzzer to send it into overtime. Just unbelievable. One of the best <laughs> to this watch. Great, man. I mean, it was like a freaking roller coaster, right? I mean, you're crying, you're down, you're depressed. And then all of a sudden you're jumping for joy like a crazy madman. And then overtime happens and, you know, and then we end up losing. But but in all honesty, a, you know, just a great game to watch. And it's exciting. I mean, even non-Aggie people, you know, uh, March Madness fans, like, I, you know, in the office, I mean, they're texting me that whole night, you know, like, man, are you watching this? And then the last two minutes were crazy. Um one thing I will say is uh, I don't know that U of H is going to make it much further. And here's why. There's two reasons I say that. One, their depth is a little suspect, right? So um, they've had some injuries this year. 
but two, um, well, let me go back to that depth. Like they actually had a bunch of people fouled out and they still beat us, which is, is pretty good. Cause I thought we were in pretty good shape. Cause I mean, they didn't have, they had how many people fell out? Listen, they, they had four of their starters foul out with like, yeah. And, and you know, still beat us. They're look, the kid shed is an absolute monster, right? That kid that I, I was so impressed with his, with his game. I hadn't watched him as much as I did the other day, you know, earlier in the year. And I'm just super, super impressed. His size, his athleticism, his leadership, and the whole thing. But, you know, it, it is sort of a credit to the Aggies also, the fact that, you know, that kid played an excellent game. They had two other guys that basically couldn't miss a free – Sharp couldn't miss a three-pointer, right? And then uh, the other guard the other guard had a, had a really good game scoring the basketball as well before he fouled out. And in spite of the fact that the Aggies couldn't hit a three-pointer to save their lives – and couldn't hit a free throw to save their lives, they went into overtime, right? Like, if That's this smart. team shoots, it shoots at all, at all, they win this game, right? 100%. And that's why I, I, I'm saying I don't know that U of A is going to make it much further. So two things, like their free their uh, free throws, I mean, we were like 50% somewhere around there, especially in the first half, right? Yeah, 14, the free something throw like that. shooting was – abysmal yeah. and no excuse for that i mean they just, they just and then our play. number one guy our number one guy didn't play well oh yeah uh Still. wade taylor wade didn't taylor. have but one point in the first half right i mean yeah and the problem is that he just kept launching from like three or four feet behind the three-point line and clearly you know <laughs> that's problematic right because it didn't work yeah, out 100 percent 100 percent that's why I'm worried about U of H making it much further. Um, but we had a lot of people step up too. I mean, we had some players play. And so, you know, Wade Taylor got kind of got lost because we had some people just going off. And so credit to the Aggies, man. I mean, that was a fun game and they played their hearts out. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. And and look, so, <laughs> so Two weeks ago or three weeks ago, maybe, I I was in Vegas for a little bit. Went down there, stayed over at the Bellagio, did some gambling, played some blackjack, played a little bit of craps. While I was there, I happened to meet this young lady, and she's from Memphis. Okay? She's from Memphis. And so... The reason I'm bringing this up is that she was texting me during the game. She was watching the game. She's a she's a basketball fan. She's an NCAA basketball fan. And actually, we were playing in Memphis, right? We were playing in Memphis. Yep. And so we were texting back and forth talking about the game. Well, she also told me that she picked U of H to win the national championship. So she was she was getting a little upset that the Aggies were giving them a hard time. And let me just shout it out. Shout out old Stacy Lewis, Stacy Lewis. And, um, you know, the best bitch ever, Stacy Lewis. That's in quotation marks. Um, <laughs> and so she was, she was a little upset because the Aggies were giving them such a hard time. It was going to blow up her bracket. Well, with about two minutes left or about a minute and a half left, I was going the other way on this. I was like, no, you're in the clear now, right? You're in the clear now. Right, and yeah. U of H was up 12 points or something with a minute and 20 seconds left. And then all – and and she responded. She says, don't – it ain't over yet. And here we go. Here we go. That last minute and 20, clearly – I mean, what an impressive, impressive showing – for, for that last minute and 20 with that to culminate with that shot by Anderson Garcia, who is the absolute glue heart and soul of this team. Just unbelievable. Un-freaking believable. That's what I got. Yeah. To One of, you know, I, I would say there's three really good games and uh, so far in the, in the tournament. And we're one of the three, you know, I think of Oakland and then you have the, a couple other overtime games that were really good, but just an exciting game to watch. It was great. Look, as an as an overall good job, Ags. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations to that to that Aggie basketball team and and those and those players specifically. Um, 
as an overall, there has to be some improvement in sort of their consistency throughout the year. They got to play better because honestly, this was not one of Buzz Williams's better coaching jobs. They ended up playing really well there at the end, but their inconsistency cost them seeding, which is the reason they had to face a number one seed in round two, right? If they could have, if they would have avoided those bad losses and, and look, we're talking about losses to Arkansas twice, Vandy, Ole Miss, right? You can avoid those losses. Then all of a sudden you're sitting up there as a five seed or a six seed, you know, a four seed. And, and now, now you've got a chance to make it a little deeper before you start to face a one seed, right? Sure, I, sure. I think it's important for those guys to do a much better job as be as far as being consistent. I also think that Buzz needs to adjust what he's doing defensively because this team was not good defensively. I mean, <laughs> over the last you know couple couple of weeks of the season, right? They were giving up a hundred. I don't know what they gave up to Alabama, hundred and something points to Alabama. They gave up, you know, Tennessee, a, a, a ton of points to freaking Tennessee. You know, like even in this game, and I know it went to overtime. I mean, but the over hit, the over in the game hit early, right? I mean, this team was it has been giving up points at the basket or wide open threes, like I have never seen a Buzz William team give it up. Yeah, well, and uh, Vegas had the over under really low, didn't they? Yeah, they clearly hadn't been watching this team over that, because <laughs> earlier in the year they couldn't score, right? And yeah, that's true. But they had and they kept other people from scoring too, right? So it was always a low scoring game. Not so much lately. Yeah, he's got to evaluate what he's doing defensively. I think I think they they've got to they've got to do a better job. They they let they let so many things easy to the basket. I mean, uh it it, it doesn't work and the rotation ends up it ends up killing them, right? Too much rotation. So um, just a little bit of that. I, I'm also, I'm also interested in seeing what happens going into next year, right? Buzz has been active in the transfer portal every year he's been here. Um, and it's worked out some and, and, and not some, you know, but it, I think this year they're going to lose Lawrence, not a big deal, right? He didn't play a ton. Levesque, who's a guy that only played 10 minutes a game or something like that, but he was an interior presence. Obviously, Boots is huge, huge, huge. I mean, that dude was the best player on this team as as the whole year, if you consider the entire season, right? I think he was better than Wade Taylor, who absolutely lost his shot this year. I don't know what went on there, but he just absolutely lost his shot. And he's a turnover waiting to happen, not to, you know, not not to forget that, right? He's just kind of lackadaisical as he goes about his business sometimes and with the with the ball. And finally, he doesn't play defense, right? The dude will let you right to the basket. So, you know, I think Boots was the best player on this team. They lose Hefner, not a big deal. He didn't do anything or contribute. But then a guy that's clearly going to be a big impact, Garcia, right? We just talked about the fact that he was the heart and soul of this of this team. He he's in the running for defensive player of the year in the country. You know, of, of the uh, or uh, first team defensive player in the country. I mean, the guy is an absolute monster on the boards right led the sec in in offensive rebound you just can't and and never complains a bit about anything doesn't you know just takes everything in stride i'm i'm absolutely in love with the guy and he's gone so um and coleman and coleman also so losing losing a lot there losing a lot mm -hmm. a lot of the production from this year you don't know what wade and manny do maybe they go and they try to go and wade could go Pro, you know, they, there's trans. Who knows? You you ex, you hope that they both come back. Look, I I love Wade, but I'd be more worried that Manny's leaving than Wade. I'll just be very honest with you. I think, uh, um, I I like I like Manny. I think you know. Then you got Carter. You got some of these other guys, and you, and you get a couple people through uh, the transfer portal. I think we're fine. Losing Manny. Right now, and Garcia would be probably more detrimental than losing, you know, Wade and Garcia, in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, he said when he's on, when he's on, this team doesn't lose, right? When when Wade is shooting, this team doesn't lose. 
And but man, Manny, like he's never off. I mean, granted, it's it's the end, but like he has not. He's got to stay off. in the good graces of the coach, apparently. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Look, there's, and it's interesting because there are five freshmen on this roster, supposedly five freshmen, one red shirt, four true freshmen on this roster. And they, we didn't see them all season long. And, you know, when you're, when you're developing a program, you, those guys have to see minutes, right? I mean, it's not like every moment of every game has been a critical, a critical minute, right? So those guys got absolutely no time on the court all year. None of them, none of them, none of them. You know, Jalen Lee, the guy, he's a six, eight guard, played a total of 18 minutes all season long, right? He, he was a, he was a 22 point scorer in high school. And I understand they've got to buy into the defense and all that stuff and everything else. But, but I, I've watched some of our guys and they didn't always play great defense. So, you know, the fact that he didn't even, he can't even get on the court, Bryce Lindsay, another guard, 20 point scorer in high school. He played 55 minutes all in the non-conference, right? Nothing in conference, you know, Rob Dockery, Nothing, no minutes, zero. Tyler Ringwell, Riggle, zero. Brandon White, zero. You know, we're talking about not a minute all freaking year, right? And these have to be the guys that are going to step into these roles next year, right? Don't you expect that one of these guys, two of these guys have to all of a sudden be more of a prominent player in this team? I mean, they, have, they, they have to be. Yeah, they have to be. I mean, we're losing a lot this year. Um, you know, and I, I, I would imagine that a is not going to be happy with making it to, you know, the, the round of 32 every year. I mean, I can't think that that's where they want this basketball team to be. Um, you know, we'll give them some high fives just because mostly because of the middle of the season, it looked like we were in dire, dire straits, right? That's why we're kind of happy where we are. But if we'd actually played to our potential, we probably wouldn't be happy Correct. about making that that point. So, you know, like while I'm saying great job, um, that's prob that's probably not the expectation of the head coach and you know the new the new new guys coming in. Like that's not where they want this program to be. You know, that's a great point. That is a great point because we did, we sort of like, we just gave it kind of a good job. In reality, good finish, right? Like, oh, good finish. Right. But the fact of the matter is that for for a lot of the season, it wasn't a good job. It wasn't a good job in those losses that we talked about earlier, right? It, it was, it was mid season. It was just, it just collapsed. I don't, I don't get it that, you know, before buzz always got better and better, right? Kind of struggled at the beginning, got better and better. And that, that made you feel good. But this time it was like, good, 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 bad. Then yeah, and if, you hear good. The, if you hear the folks at uh, Texas or other places, right? Some of the, you, it's like, Oh, the injuries and don't give me the injuries, right? If before the season, this team was expected to be comfortably in the tournament and make a solid run in the tournament. I mean, I think people would have said sweet 16 or better at least, right? As far as expectations. And so they sure. mentioned the round of 32. So not quite there. But, you know, I think overall, I don't think it was a great job this year, but I do think it was a great finish. And 100%. I, agree. I don't blame it on injuries. I, you know, they missed, they missed boots in the non conference for a couple. Hell, it wasn't the non conference that killed them, right? It wasn't the, it wasn't those games that, that hurt them. So, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not going to blame it on, that's really the only significant injury, by the way. I mean, uh, because Marvel was never on this team at all, all year long. So that's, that doesn't count. Correct. And so with that, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. To yeah, let's do that. We spent and way too much time. Look here, some baseball jersey, baby. Baseball I like jersey. It. I like I it. come during baseball season ready. All right. Is this a baseball podcast now? Is that what this is? We're just going to quickly hit the Aggie baseball. Right? <laughs> I quick, love quick, it. Quick. Baseball's great. 22 and 3 overall, 3 and 3 in conference. Play Auburn next. Obviously, the three losses in conference, they're, all of their three losses in conference, they were perfect in the non conference, which is great because conference schedule is going to be tough, right? They oh, that, yeah. that, that, that thing is loaded, loaded. 
look, they took a little bit of a hickey at Florida, especially the pitching staff to a certain ex extent, right? I mean, they sort of – but that Florida lineup is probably about as good as it gets, right? They recovered a lot better against Mississippi State this past weekend. The pitching oh, yeah. staff Can I tell you a story did. about that? Huh? Can I tell you a story about that? Yeah, tell me a story. Okay, so I uh, – you know, my daughter plays softball, right? So her team decided to go. Um, we all decided to go to the A and M softball game, which was at four thirty. Yeah. And so, you know, we go up there. Obviously, uh, my family's from College Station, and so uh, we're sitting there. And I was like, you know what? Why don't we just do some general mission to the A and M baseball game on Saturday? And so we go. So the AM baseball game, we watch a couple innings there. Well, probably a little more than a couple innings there, and then just walk over to the softball field, which by the way, the softball girls are doing great. Yeah. They're doing excellent. Yeah. Watch some bombs there. But got to watch Montgomery, you know, sit up there and hit a jack. And then the second time I'm telling my daughter Sydney, I was like, they should, probably should not pitch to this guy. Like they should definitely walk this guy. Um, and then what does he do? Another jack. It's another jack, right? And then so the third time he gets up, what do they do? They walk him. They potentially walk him. And, I mean, the game's over by then. It was, I mean, watching Montgomery swing the bat. And, by the way, he's a great fielder, too. It's just yeah. – it's a, it's a one of those pitch, things, like, way. you should enjoy it because those kind of players come once in, you know, in a generation. So, great to watch him play. Great to watch a lot of those guys play, but – Look, I think baseball Lavalette, is Montgomery, Lavalette, both of them, absolute stars and killing it. Appel is playing excellent, right? The dude is really, really hitting the ball. Grahoven, yes, the I mean, has got to be one of the best freshmen in the country. I mean, that dude, the way he's, I mean, and clutch too, right? Like in in, yeah. in big moments, he's done great. I Sorrell's you know, done great. He underappreciated and not mentioned. Camarillo, right? Ollie's been playing excellent and getting on base and doing those things. And not to mention defensively, the dude is an absolute stud. Well, you know that that's what they brought him in here for is defense defense. And he's playing, he's doing better than probably expected offensively. So can't be more happy, happier for that guy. And, you know, here's the thing. He, he may not have a ton of power, man, but he gets on base and that's all he has to do. hundred percent. The pitching staff took a little bit of a step back the moment conference play started, right? And, you know, the bullpen sort of started that in a couple of games even before that. But, you know, in reality, it was going up against a team like Florida at home and, you know, that that lineup. And, look, that's an adjustment to anybody in the country. Um, and they they did. They took a little bit of a beating there. But they came back last weekend against Mississippi State. They really – those arms started playing a little bit. You know – Prager obviously started the season on this incredible run without allowing as if, without allowing a run, pun intended or not intended. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so you know, but honestly, now watching those guys, I think Lampkin is the best pitcher on the staff, the best starter, man. And okay, starter. If you're saying starter, starter, then I starter. Agree. yeah, the best starter. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. I think he's the best pitch, the best starter on the staff. You know, and. I'm excited to see what these guys continue to do as the season goes on. You know, whether Cortez gets in the mix, whether they keep Jones in there with both these other two guys, Prager and, and Lampkin, obviously. But, you know, they've got, a, they've got a number of arms and starters that, man, really excite you, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think they're going to be fine. They're going to get beat up. We're, we're in the SEC. There's going to be games that they're just going to get beat up. And that's just going to happen. Just like we're going to beat up pitchers and other SEC teams. I mean, it's – these the SEC is full of hitters, and we have probably the best pitching, but our best – the SEC pitching is facing the best hitters. So you're going to see people get – they're going to go out there, they're going to have a day that's not great, and they're going to get beat up for it. Because if you place a pitch to the wrong area of the plate, you're going to get punished in this league. Yeah, and, and you know – Here's the thing, too, right, that because of those hitters, sometimes it's not just the fact that a pitcher's giving up a ton of runs. 
but they're having to throw a lot of pitches. The starters aren't going to go deep into games, which means you've got to have a deep bullpen, which this team does. And I'm going to let you get into it because why couldn't, why wasn't I talking about the best pitcher on the staff on, on this team at all together? You know who it is, dude. I mean, the guy pitches three, four innings. I mean, he he's fantastic. Fantastic. Oshinbeck is, is an absolute beast. Absolute Ice beast. cold. And he, he looks ride. up there. He looks like he has no pulse on the on the on the rubber, man. And and you're absolutely correct, man. No matter what the situation. Your starter went out in an inning and a half, so he came in and pitched five, right? Like you're 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 through five, your starter, your starter's wearing out, you end into the sixth, he comes in, he's gonna close it out, right? I mean, like if you need him just for the last three outs, done. You know, whatever it is, the guy is just absolutely nails, man. I'm and I'm always impressed because like he doesn't throw incredibly hard, right? He's probably like right around 90 miles an hour. Or so a little bit up, a little bit down from right there. You know, that's, that's top speed for him, but it's all that movement and the change in the, and the changes and stuff like that, especially from that angle for left-handed, right? I mean, it's just, he just gets out period. Yeah. He, he, his control is right there. I mean, he's going to throw strikes. They're not going to be down the middle. Um, yeah. The guy's, by far the best pitcher probably in the SEC. I, I mean, maybe there's some stars that are really good, but when you talk about – I mean, what do you call him, a relieving a relieving closer? I mean, you know, he's, like – He's just a utility just pitcher. That. Utility pitcher. That's what I'm going to call him. The guy freaking kills it. Anyway, you know, they got a long ways to go, man. It's it's fun to watch, man. They've, they've been incredible. Schloss has done a great job of, uh, you know, accumulating this talent and putting them together and, and really turning around things from last year, especially with the pitching staff, right? I'm just uh, – I'm super excited about where this season's going to go for Aggie baseball, and we'll continue to talk about it. Awesome. So let's talk a little football, man. Let's talk a little football. Oh, this is that. Finally, we're like halfway okay. into this thing. I know. <laughs> I know people it's probably great. already tuned out, right? Like, where's the football? <laughs> right? Because every time I turn on Tech Sags and they're all they're doing is talking basketball, I just turn it right back off. So, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, so we're gonna move to football. Start here. Spring game, April 20th. I was excited. I was excited to because our boy Elko had a little presser uh earlier today, I think, or yesterday. Anyway. That was it today. Okay. okay. I didn't get to see that. A little presser. And uh they asked him what what what's the format of the spring game, you know? The last couple of years we're used to having Jimmy come out there and you know, he sets up a one team with all the starters and the other team with all the scrubs and then lets the offense look really good, you know, and you know, whatever, right? And uh good ish. Good ish. Except they never actually look good, which is the the bigger problem. Anyway, so, you know, that's kind of what we're used to, right? And and it's like this weird, you know, it's not even like a full game atmosphere and all this. All right. Not Elko, baby. Not Elko. There is going to be a draft. There's going to be a draft. That's how the teams oh, are going to I heard be. about this. I heard about yes. this. Yes. Yes. And it's going to be played as a regular game. Like, Everything normal is a regular game. Obviously, they're not going to hit the quarterbacks because we got to keep those. I was going to say, let's say, uh, you know, there's got to like be the some red out of a out regular game, right? Yeah. Kickoff, punt, whatever, blah, blah, blah. One team against the other. You, you're on your sideline. I'm on my sideline. Here we go. Right. I'm excited about that, too. Just go out there and let those kids cool. have fun, right? Sounds pretty cool. It's so funny that today like today you hear Aggies everywhere talk about you know the fact that uh the way Elko does it is so much better how you know how bad was you know Jimbo for this or for that and these are all the same folks that you know six months ago 
we're saying that, you know, Jimbo is basically God's gift to coaching, right? And like, he's got a title, so he must be one of the best coaches in the country and so on and so forth. And it's the same people saying that six months ago, but now, you know, that he's gone and the truth comes out about all the crap that he was doing and not doing. All yeah. of a sudden, everybody's like, oh my God, oh my God. Well, and sometimes you got to take that with a grain of salt, right? Because when a, even if a successful leader leaves, there's going to be people talking about how bad they did it and how much better this person is. Just like you had to take it with a grain of salt when they said Jimbo is awesome. Because, and Aleo, you know me for a long time. Never been a Jimbo fan. Thought it was a bad hire. Um, but my point is, is, some of that's a little bit of talk. I want to see – well, two things I want to see. I want to see, obviously, it on the field. Um, but also, man, the spring game. Like, I really – I like, how cool would it be to see, like, it's almost like two different teams on each sideline. I mean, is that how it's going to look? That's what it's going to look like, man. Are it's they drafting the coaches? Are they drafting the coaches? I don't know if they're drafting coaches. <laughs> I mean, that would be – or are they are they having the coaches draft the teams? I mean, like, is this going to be an all out competition? Because you know what, like, that is what breeds competition, and that's what breeds like a winning atmosphere. It's like you know, like, yeah, we're all brothers, but yeah, I'm I remember a couple of years you, back. Bro. I'm gonna win. I remember a couple of years back. It was one of those things where they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna but we're not. No, the players can't see who's picking who and when. Like. Let's not hurt anybody's feelings around here. Hell no. Hell no. No, no. We're gonna let the you last know. Person pick. You're the last pick in this draft. You're the last Heck pick yeah. in this draft, bro. What are you gonna do no. about it? I love it. Competition and a winning atmosphere, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we're excited for the spring game. And look, we got several a couple weeks of spring practice here. Obviously, we got to make it through and get, you know, try to stay healthy and all those kind of things. Right before we got we started practice on Friday, the Aggies also released the 24 spring football roster. All right. Just released it. You know, when these came out over the last several years, there was always people missing. Like somebody that you didn't know had left the team or whatever, but his name is no longer on the roster. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. you know? And Nobody it's all secretive and it. shit, you know. But mm -hmm. There wasn't a single name that you didn't expect to be gone, gone. Everybody you expected to be here is here. Uh, Matthews, the safety, obviously he said he's entering transport. He's gone. McCall said he's entering transport. Gone, right? But the guys that you, everybody else, they're on this roster, right? Even though there's been there, you know, there's been rumors of this guy's not not happy, whatever. It, the fact of the matter is that. It looks like everybody's bought in right now. And the release of this roster, a couple of things that I just want to point out as far as the makeup, right? The makeup of this team, offensively, on campus now, does not include the guy, the freshmen still having enrolled and, and all that, right? On campus right now, 18 offensive linemen. That's great depth. Scholarship guys. Yeah. I'm not just talking yeah. about bodies. Scholarship guys. 18. Mm -hmm. Right? 10 wide receivers. Pretty good depth. Pretty good depth. Not, not exceptional, but 10 is pretty good. Three quarterbacks. Great. We got another one coming in, by the way. Three quarterbacks. Excellent depth. Five running backs. Pretty good. Feel happy with that. Because on top of that, there's also two fullbacks. <laughs> there you so, go. I didn't even know they had fullbacks anymore. Yeah, they they they've got an actual fullback. They I think they recruited the guy. Oh wow, nice. So thirty eight guys on offense, man. So that you've got depth at different at every position. I feel like um, tight ends. I think it's six, six tight ends. <laughs> like it's pretty impressive. It is pretty impressive. I am not worried hopefully about depth on this Hopefully team. there's three good ones, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that we need six, but, yeah. Well, probably not. Defense, defense, 16 defensive backs, 10 linebackers, 15 D linemen. 
look, the numbers that the, the numbers that worry me the most here is the D line, to be honest with you, and it's still pretty decent depth. Yeah. Well, like when you look at the transfer portal, and you know, I know we're one of the highest ranked transfer portal, you know, teams or whatever. You know, if you look at that, there's a couple of like really good players we got out of the transfer portal. And then we have a lot of good players. And obviously this is all just what we think they're going to do, right? I mean, some of those could be excellent and some could be a fail. But what I see in that is depth, a, a depth of a lot of good players. And so we needed that, right? Because oh, yeah. Elko lost a lot. I think he's smart. He he we we got we got numbers. Did we get, you know, and, and did, listen, we, did we replace numbers? Honestly, Probably honestly, not. I'll tell you, I'll tell you honestly, it's not just numbers. It is good quality depth with quality players up there, man. And not only that, I think the mix of the uh sort of um get to work guys and big time star guys is a good Right now, it's a great mix, right? I like the composition of this team. I agree. So they, I mentioned they started spring practice last Friday. They've had three practices so far, only one in pads, right? Remember, they got the rule every time they start practicing, basically they have to go through a certain number of days with, before, they, before they put the pads on, right? So, um, they Well, you just know who's to, not in pads? Huh? You know who's not in pads? Who's not in pads? Foster. Who? Foster. Yes, Foster not in pads because he's running track. Did you uh, – I was watching – uh, Yes, so Elko the other day, they asked about Foster. He goes – and, I, you know, you can't really read into it, but he goes, yeah, he's in track. And, like, it was not like a – I'm excited for him to be in track. He did not – he did not go into, like, you know, the Elko, like, hey, we want – he goes – yeah, he's in track. Like, I read, I probably read into it more than, but like, he seemed almost like, yeah, he's in track. Like, yeah, that son of a gun's in track, and I don't want him to be. Listen, I had, there is no chance in hell that Foster would be starting on my offensive line if this were the case on this team. It wouldn't happen. I mean, it it wouldn't happen. Uh, it certainly wouldn't happen at center. I, that's all I can say about that. I mean, look, the guys. All yeah, right, we'll move on. Sorry, big I didn't time throw or big time everything. No, no, no. Hey. He's been one of the. He's been the worst offensive lineman on this team for the last three years, and people keep saying, "Oh, let's praise and praise this guy." Like whatever. He was a great recruit. Yes, he was a great freaking recruit. He has not lived up to the billing on the field during games. Not to mention he's hurt half the time. And the other half, he's running track. Throwing well, and Alejo, who knows what his motivation is. Maybe he doesn't want to be an NFL player. Maybe he wants to enjoy his college career and play track and play some football. He's good enough he wants to, to, go to, to the be Olympics. on the football team. He wants to, go yeah, to wants to go to the Olympics and just, you know, wants to be just, uh, you know, what a college athlete was back in the eighties. Right. And I, now, I, I guess that's now, okay. I guess now that's I okay. need, what I need is the coaching staff to realize that that's the case and move on from him because of the fact that the star rating is what it is and the fan, whatever, like that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is on the field production. And that dude has not done it. I'm not saying that that's a bad mentality to have. Like if that's what he wants to do, I mean, that's, that's great. Like I'm not, I'm not knocking somebody that just wants to play some college ball and then go do some other stuff. So, from let me just, I'm just gonna ignore that already. But so basically, you know, I it, with a brand new coaching staff, man, things really, 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 really change a lot on the first day of practice, second day of practice for this for these players, right? The the drill work and the different things. Each, you know, they're a completely new offensive staff, right? Now, you know, some of these guys have history with Elko, so they may know some of the defensive things that they're doing. But in reality, all these guys are basically getting used to a completely different practice, learning a completely different practice. And so when I, when I saw all that going on on, you know, practice one, 
man, I was sitting there and I was like, okay, pretty slow as far as practice is concerned. Not a lot of reps, but it makes sense, right? A lot more teaching day one, you know, demonstrating the new drills, all the good stuff. Day two, you could tell, still not in pads, but moving faster, right? The kids were moving just a little bit faster. Day three in pads, they were significantly faster. They're still not, they're still not Alejo Pacini practice speed, but they're now there's you you can see it, right? Just, and I'm not even talking about the execution of whatever. I'm talking about just the ability to run the drill. You know, players actually being able to run the drill. And in three right. days. That that is. So you talking about they're they're just trying to learn the the pra how the practice system is going to be right like absolutely I mean, right yeah so like they're figuring out okay here's the routine of practice obviously he's going to mix some things in but like here's kind of the makeup of practice and so yeah. move in from station to station and figuring out what the coach is looking for and and being able to to move to move quicker and have a more um, Efficient practice, I'm guessing, is what you're talking about. Absolutely. And so you can okay. see that progressing, right. progressing and progressing there so far. Look, sure. the, the, we talked about the presser with Elko. The, the reality of the matter is, you know, not not a lot not a lot came out in the presser. Obviously, they released the names of some of the guys that aren't practicing. Uh, Green, Dewberry, Aki, Shamar Turner, and Nye White, and Foster are all out for the spring. Um he also talked about Brunlow Dindy is out right now. He's been, he's been hurt throughout this process. He think he thinks he may come back during the spring. That's always that's been your dude, right? Like that's the guy you really you've been high on for a couple of years now, isn't it? Well, Brunlow Dindy, you know, we 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 expected a lot more from him over the last two years, but um, you know, he's a guy that's a five star recruit that just hasn't been able to stay on the field much, right? Yeah. Yep. So, you know, see what we can get out of him. He's apparently not healthy again so that that's a problem not good um but nothing much else was really said during that press conference other than you know he same old coach speak right he's excited about the energy the effort the players are bought in whatever and you know he's not going to ever say anything different than that having said all that what a relief to listen to an aggie presser and not to have to hear the just absolute nonsense that came out of Jimbo Fisher's mouth. That was the best part of it all. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's still all coach speak, right? I mean, let's yeah. all be honest. Um, but I think uh, you get a little more honest feel from him. Um, I listened to, to Klein talk. Uh, not a great speaker, but I, I still have faith in him. You know, like graduating from state, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but uh, I'm really excited for him. He did, you know, say a couple things about like building the offense around the talent he has and getting, you know, the ball into the player playmakers. But that's kind of that's become coach speak now too. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Uh, that's also. Coach and then speak. you know, um, I thought that they were very honest about where uh, Connor is where the, the quarterbacks are. Um, I believe them when they say that they think they're, they'll be ready by the fall. So that's great. But uh, I have a I have a question for you. Yeah. So uh, did you see the 2025 schedule? Yeah. It's the 24 you, schedule, except you just flip home and away. What the hell? What, were, what are your thoughts about that? Ah. I mean, I think it's exactly what you should have expected. Um, really? Well, yeah, because they, they've they got one more year of the 12-team playoff, right? And so the money gets bigger than the year after. The year after they is probably when they're going to implement the changes to the whatever full-time, you know, schedule situation in the SEC, right? So um, – How would you feel if you were Florida? <laughs> well, you know <laughs> – that's tough, dude. That's tough. That is tough. Now, if you're Missouri, you're loving this. You know, 
there is there is enough change in the SEC every year that you still should be a little uncomfortable because from one year to the next, you yeah. just ain't quite sure. All right, I have another question for you. Okay. Transfer portal opens up mid-April, right? Is it 15th, 14th, something like that? Let's uh let's take take a moment and leave that for a question that I have a little bit in just a second. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. One a question from the tailgate. Be. Oh, yeah, we need tailgate people asking us questions for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did want to just make a couple of comments about observations from practice for folks. Uh, Torian York. Torian York, dude. One is that that guy right there is loved, loved by the coaching staff. They freaking adore him. He is an absolute football player. He's instinctive. And he's just got a motor that doesn't stop and a brain that doesn't stop, man. That dude is working and they love him. Torian freaking York. He will be the leader of this defense this year as a sophomore. Mm. That's my number one observation. Okay. Uh, Wigman so far, a little limit. Clearly, what what, I mean, what else go say about his standing and their standing as far as where things are yeah i mean he's doing a little bit here and there but he's not full speed obviously they're keeping him protected but he's not probably you know making cuts and things like that he's not he's not full speed yet but he's made progress good progress but not the progress that maybe connor wants wanted to be at this point kind of what he said yeah the other thing i was talking about is he they said look connor is the starter on this team Oh yeah, start. yeah. That doesn't mean there's not competition, he, you know. But right now he's the start. Yeah, he's they're a very they're like he's the guy. He's the guy for us. So they are limiting him. He, they're not doing any of the quarterback run stuff with him, right? Mm-hmm. But they, his arms been his look good. You know, he's been delivering the ball. You still see the anticipation, the things that that really that you really loved about him early in the year last year. I mean, that anticipation that he showed in-game under pressure and those things, you still see that. And so, you know, excited about that. I'll tell you, though. Yeah, if he stays healthy under Klein's offense, we're going to see the best Connor we've seen. Now, granted, if he stays healthy. The good thing is we've got Henderson behind it if it doesn't work. And if he can't stay healthy. Well, let me tell you this. Reed has looked incredibly sharp. Really? Just incredibly I'm sharp. Hungry. And he's he's had a good camp so far. He's going to put pressure on Henderson. Really? For that job. I'm telling you, he is. Hmm. Another guy that after sort of the rumors in uh, earlier in the year and over the wintertime, Moss at running back has has looked good. And he's he's he, he looks like he's ready to be part of this. Um, so that's exciting to see. So, uh, you know, those are some guys that have really stood out. And uh, Shamar Stewart, defensively, also along with York. Shamar Stewart, really, really starting to showcase some leadership. You know, and be 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 one of those guys on this team. So excited about that. Um, finally, he didn't say the word execute once. (laughs) So that was awesome. That was awesome. Um, all right. Questions from the tailgate. Here we go. Guys, do you guys, uh, have you, uh, have you identified people that will emerge in the spring? People that will emerge in the spring. Let's start on defense. Thoughts, Phil? Well, I mean, DBs is a big thing, right? So I'm hoping Lee. I'm hoping Lee's the guy. Yeah, Lee's going to have to earn a starting spot on this defense, to be honest with you. There's some, there's going to be some competition at cornerback. And I'm not saying he, he's not one of those guys, but, you know, you've got, you've got Ricks, you've got Chappelle, you got, I mean, 
the uh, Thomas and, and different guys, you know, so a lot of depth at cornerback and competition at cornerback, yeah. right? And that's an awesome thing. And so, yeah, it could be him. It's definitely going to be, I think there's going to be, you know, be a couple of the defensive backs that really emerged throughout this spring. Um, I'm, I think we're going to hear great things about Javon Thomas, a guy that played some as a freshman last year, right? I think that is Thomas, uh, how tall is that guy? Is he one of our, is, there, is he one of our taller guys out there? He's, he's, he's not, yeah, he's not one of the shorter guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cause I, I felt like the last year, like we played good D at, well, I shouldn't say good D, but it wasn't like we broke coverage for receivers, but we're the 50, 50 balls. We're, we're going to be there most of the time. And then we tackle them. Right. So we need some people to go, to go up there and get the ball. And it's As a short guy, that, it's hard it's for me to say that. Uh, some taller DBs out there. And and the thing about it is, and they, they they purposefully went out and brought in taller, longer cornerbacks. That's what Elko just did this this season in the transfer portal yeah. and and um, in the recruiting class. So, you know, I think they agree with you. Is sort of my point on that, right? Um, you know, so those group that you know that's a that's a group of defensive backs that I think is gonna is gonna emerge. I already talked about. Tory in York and what I think that dude's going to do this this spring and come out of this spring as. Uh, I talked about Shamar Shamar Stewart as well. Um, a guy that's going to emerge to me also is DJ Hicks, big time recruit last year, right? So now he's in his second year. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that now is going to be, you know, with with the guys that are out at defensive tackle specifically, right? There's going to be some a lot of reps to take up in there. And I think he's a guy that's going to do that. I think he's going to be that guy that ends up starting opposite maybe a, a, a Shamar Turner, right? And okay. I'm excited to see his second year in this program. And the last guy I'll mention defensively, and I'm not sure, I don't know that I expect him to emerge, it's a guy I would like to see emerge. And that's yeah, Marco Harris. Yeah. Okay. I like his skill set, you know, and I saw some good things out of him as a freshman last year. You didn't really get him. He didn't, he didn't really get on the field. I'm excited to see where that goes, you know. So, Marco yeah, Harris. I like it. To throw out there. How about offensively, Philip? You got any names offensively? Our entire offensive line, we need them to show up. Um, you know, I, I I have a hard time picking one person because um, when you say, oh, we need this one person to show up, we actually – just one person showing up there doesn't help us. We need some unity and cohesiveness. I can't even say that word. You know what I'm trying to say. Cohesiveness. And so um, – we got to have that up front. I think it's more than just one player there. I think they got to work as one, and we didn't see that last year. So I, if it's like they need to play as one player, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that is a great, great point. And it does. It has to be the unit, right? It, I mean, the offensive line is one of those things. You're only as strong as your weakest link kind of situation, right? I mean – it is about the cohesiveness and the working together and the whole thing. So it's got to be all of them. And, you know, those names, who are they, right? I mean, is it, is it, is it Zoom, Basantis, Fathery? Fathery, um, yeah. Nabu and Dewberry's out right now. So is it the transfer, the transfer from Kansas, you know, that takes, you know, gets in there. Aki's not, not in during, during the spring. So, you know, probably not him. One of the young guys as well, you know, you, Somebody's somebody's gonna have to step up in there, but that group, you're right. The entire group has to emerge. Well, there has to be a leader in that that group that takes the lead. They don't have to be the best at their skill there, but they're gonna have to be a leader for that group and really talk X's and O's with them and and explain what's going on at each time. Like there's gotta be that kind of leader leadership. When you think about, you know, some leaders in the past that may have not been the best player. 
but they made that team tick and move. Yeah. Um, like skill wise, like that win was awesome, right? But like, I mean, he played a little bit in the NFL, but like he ran that defense. We need like a that win at the offense line. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm gonna say the Tory and York of the offensive line. <laughs> there you go. Uh non-offensive lineman, a couple of guys. That, look, I don't know if it's like this emerged thing with Owens. I he didn't have a great year last year as a freshman. I think we're going to see that change. I think he's going – I would call that emerge. I think he's going to be huge this year. I I, I love his skill set. I think he's going to be great. And, I think he's going to be great, especially under Klein. Yeah. I think, yeah, Klein's going to going to help going to help those running backs a ton. Um, and and two other guys, a tight end and Platt. I think Platt with Green especially because Green is out. I think Platt's a guy that's going to get a lot of run here. And okay. at the receiver position, a guy I'm excited to see this, Micah Tease. Micah Tease. We haven't been talking about him a ton. Um, the dude's got speed to kill. And he's not, you know, he's he's actually got pretty decent size. I'm excited to see Micah Tease. I think the dude can be, get get a lot of reps in the rotation with this wide receiver group. Excited. Micah Tease. Okay. Okay. Huh. All right. Anyone you're worried about losing? I think this is where we get into transfer portal questions. Well, I'm actually I'm not worried about the losses on the transfer portal. That's kind of why I asked you, and and I may be thinking about this all wrong. But so obviously you can lose some people like a Clemson or you know some other non SEC teams. But the beauty, beautiful part about this transfer portal, and, and if I'm wrong, correct me, is the in, inner SEC transfer portal closed during April. So I think of it as almost a benefit to us because we're in the best league. So we're not in the Big 12 anymore. Um, so I think that this is an opportunity for us to pick up a couple of even more studs. And, yeah, we may lose some people to, you know, some of these other schools, but probably not our top talent. And that'll maybe make some room for some a couple more pickups here. Granted, I mean you'd rather have them before spring practice started anyway. So they're going to come in starting as kind of a little behind schedule. But to me, the transfer portal is at this time period is probably pretty good for the SEC. I um yeah I, look. You can disagree. It's okay. No, no, no. I don't think I just I I don't think that I don't think that our critical guys are going anywhere. I don't. I don't think our critical could but guys I would be a little concerned about losing. I I I think there's a chance Henderson leaves if especially if Reed has the kind of camp that 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 he started off with, right? And mm -hmm. and uh so that, you know, that could send Henderson somewhere you know, somewhere else. Um, Daniels, if he feels like his reps, you know, he's not getting any reps behind Moss and Owens, right? And that's a dude who can step on the field in a lot of places. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I talked about the depth at tight end. One of those guys, you know, one of those guys may leave. You don't know who, right? You don't expect it to be green. You wouldn't think it's Platt. You know, maybe Theo. But, yeah, like six of them. So, yeah, exactly. Not that, not that, not that worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, some of those offensive linemen that have been here for a couple of years that haven't gotten any run, maybe a Hunter Herb or, or uh, well, you know, we talked about Aki, and you know, he's not really in in the running mix, you know, or whatever. And so maybe some as of, of yet, as of yet, we'll see. But no, but I can't, I can't, I don't expect anybody, anybody like that's. Critical, critical. So, all right, Philip. Last words, man. Man, appreciate you having me. Love it, man. B teams, I, it, B teams in full effect. I, I appreciate you being on, so that I don't have to talk to myself. <laughs> uh, Giga Maggie's AP. I P P R P R par 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 par. par? Yeah. Uh, yeah, or, out from the tailgate. Adios.